In this video, I'm going to show you a new and radically different technique I've developed for fine-tuning the autofocus on your lenses. I call it dot tune. Unlike existing tuning methods which require you to take a bunch of photographs at various autofocus tune values until you find the value producing sharp photos, with dot tune you start with a sharply focused image and then use the focus confirmation dot in your viewfinder to find which tune values will produce that result. It's like playing a game of darts where instead of throwing a bunch of darts at the board until you find the right angle that hits the bullseye, you instead walk up to the board, shove a dart into the bullseye, and then walk backwards to figure out the angle in reverse. This means dot tune is not only faster than other tuning methods, but it's also more accurate and consistent. And best of all, dot tune is free. I'll briefly go over the six steps of dot tune to give you an overview of the process, then we'll dive into each step in detail to show you everything you need to know to use dot tune on your camera. Step 1. Set up an autofocus target on a wall and mount your camera on the tripod, the same as you'd use for other tuning methods. Step 2. Enter Live View and establish critical focus of your target using either Live View's autofocus or by manually focusing. Step 3. Switch to manual focus on your body or lens and set your initial autofocus tune value to zero. Step 4. While looking through the viewfinder, half press the shutter or AF on button and check if the green focus confirmation dot is illuminated. Step 5. Cycle through other autofocus tune values to establish which range of values produce a consistent and reliable green focus confirmation dot in the viewfinder. Step 6. Calculate your final A of tune value by selecting the midpoint of the range you established in Step 5. That's all there is to dot tune. Now let's dive into the details. Step 1 is the target and camera setup. Choose a high contrast autofocus target that has both horizontal and vertical detail, such as a focus chart. I like to use the free chart that's on Bob Atkins' site. I've included a link to this chart in the description area of my video. Tape the chart to a flat vertical surface such as a wall. Then mount your camera on a stable tripod and position it so that the lens is pointing straight and parallel with the ground. Adjust your tripod head so that the center autofocus point on your camera covers an area on the chart that contains both horizontal and vertical detail. For general tuning, the suggested distance between the camera and the chart is 50 times the focal length. For example, a 35mm lens would be 35 times 50, which comes to 1750 millimeters, or about 5.7 feet. Set your camera to its single shot mode with the center autofocus point selected. Also set the aperture on your lens to its largest setting, which means the lowest f-stop number. For Nikon bodies, enable the camera's digital viewfinder if it's not already enabled. The rangefinder will provide additional focus confirmation feedback in the form of front and back focusing arrows. Step 2 is to establish critical focus of your target under the center autofocus point in LiveView. You can do this by using contrast detect autofocus available in LiveView, or by manually focusing within LiveView, or with any combination of the two. It really doesn't matter which method you use as long as you assure that the target is in critical focus. I suggest using the magnification feature of LiveView to confirm you've achieved critical focus. In step 3, set your camera or lens to manual focus. This is necessary to prevent the critical focus we just established in the previous step from changing when we start half pressing the shutter in future steps. On Nikon systems, you can switch to manual focus either on the body or the lens. I suggest you do it on the body because that will allow you to avoid touching the lens and inadvertently altering the focus. On Canon systems, the only method available for switching to manual focus is via the switch on the lens. Be careful not to touch the focus ring while doing this. Next, set your initial autofocus tune value for your lens to zero. This will serve as our starting point in the dot tune process. Step 4 and 5 is where the rubber meets the road. These represent the essence of the dot tune method, where you determine the range of A of tune values that produce a consistent and reliable autofocus confirmation dot. Proper evaluation of the viewfinder focus confirmation is critical to the dot tune method and will require a little patience, diligence, and practice on your part. Now, while looking through the viewfinder, half press the shutter or full press the AF on button to engage the focus confirmation system. While holding that button press, watch for the green autofocus confirmation dot in the viewfinder. Be sure not to confuse the auto exposure lock indication for the focus indication. 
If the green dot lights up immediately after pressing the shutter and remains continuously illuminated for at least 5 seconds as you continue to hold the shutter, then this means the autofocus tune value you currently have dialed in is part of the autofocus tune range. Note that this doesn't mean this value will be your final or best value. It only means that the value is within the range of contiguous values which produce a focus confirmation. In almost all cases, there will be multiple autofocus tune values which produce this confirmation. Our goal is to find what that full range is so that we can later calculate the midpoint of the range as our final tune value. Here is what a solid confirmation looks like on a Canon 5D Mark III. And here is what a solid confirmation looks like on a Nikon D800. If you don't get a focus confirmation dot after half pressing the shutter, or if the dot you do get flickers or wavers, this means the current autofocus tune value is not part of the tune range. Also, if there is any delay between half pressing the shutter and when the green dot is illuminated, this also means that the current tune value is not part of the range, even if that delay was very short and even if the dot stays continuously illuminated after that initial delay. Again, a positive focus confirmation means an immediate and continuous illumination of the green dot. Here is what a failed confirmation looks like on a Canon 5D Mark III. And here is what one possible failed confirmation looks like on a Nikon D800. On Nikon bodies, you have the additional feedback of the digital rangefinder arrows, which tell you not only when the camera thinks the subject is out of focus, but also which direction the focus ring must be turned in order to bring the subject into focus. Those arrows can be used to expedite certain parts of the dot tune process, but for now, I only want to describe how they should be used for verifying focus confirmation of a given tune value. If you see only one arrow illuminated, or one arrow plus the center dot, this means the current tune value is not part of the tune range. Generally, the arrow and or the dot will flicker in this scenario. However, there is a special and somewhat rare case I need to mention. If you see a solid green dot with both arrows illuminated, either both arrows at the same time or the arrows flickering but at roughly the same frequency, then this means the focus is confirmed and that the current value is part of the range. You may never see this case in your dot tuning. I've only seen it a few times myself after several hours of testing. But if it does occur, you need to carefully watch that the two arrows illuminate at roughly the same frequency. For example, if you see the left arrow flicker five times but the right arrow flicker only twice, then this means the current value is not part of the range. In step four, we discussed how to evaluate the focus confirmation in the viewfinder and applied that technique to evaluate our initial tune value of zero. The next step is to repeat that evaluation for other tune values to find the full range of values which produce a reliable focus confirmation. If the initial tune value of zero in step four produced a focus confirmation, you then need to start increasing the tune value in the positive direction until you reach the first value which no longer produces a reliable focus confirmation. In other words, increase the tune value from zero to plus one and recheck the viewfinder. If you still get a reliable focus confirmation, keep increasing the tune value until you no longer get that confirmation. When you arrive at the first positive tune value which no longer produces a reliable confirmation, then you have reached one end of your tune range for that lens. Write down that value minus one. We're subtracting one because the tune range only includes the last value which provided focus confirmation. Your next step is to find the other end of the tune range, which will be on the negative side. So set your autofocus tune to negative one and repeat the same procedure, but this time decreasing the tune value. When you arrive at the first negative tune value, which no longer produces a focus confirmation, then you have reached the other end of the tune range for that lens. Write down that value minus one step. For example, if minus 15 was the first value that failed to produce a focus confirmation, then write down minus 14. And you're done. All that's left to do is to calculate the midpoint of the range you just established and you'll have your final autofocus tune value. I'll describe this in more detail in just a minute. Now what happens if the initial autofocus tune value of zero from step four didn't produce a focus confirmation? That simply means your autofocus tune range won't include the value zero, which in turn means your range will be composed of either all positive or all negative tune values. You have a few options on how to find the first end of your range. 
The simplest way is to just pick a direction, either positive or negative, and start increasing or decreasing the tune values until you find one end of the range which gives a confirmation. A faster method is to perform a big coarse jump in autofocus tune values, again in either direction, like plus 5 or minus 5, checking the viewfinder as you do. If you get a focus confirmation after this big coarse jump in tune value, then start using the procedure I just described for finding the full range. If you don't get a confirmation after this big coarse jump, then check if the viewfinder feedback indicates that you're at least moving in the right direction. You can determine this by carefully watching how the green dot and rangefinder arrows flash. For example, if you got no dot at a tune value of 0, but after your big jump to plus 5 you get at least a flickering dot, that means you're moving in the right direction. Also, if you got a flickering dot at a tune value of 0, but after your big jump the dot flickers less frequently, meaning it's a more solid dot, then that also means you're moving in the right direction. After you start using dot tune, you'll quickly learn not only when a given tune value is confirmed, but also when you're getting closer or further away from the tuning range. On Nikon bodies, you don't actually have to guess the direction of your big coarse tune jumps, because the rangefinder arrows will tell you. If you see an arrow pointing to the right, then that means focus is in front of the target, so do your big jump in the positive direction. If you see an arrow pointing to the left, then this means the focus is behind the subject, so do your big jump in the negative direction. Again, once you arrive at any tune value which produces focus confirmation, use the previously described method to find the full range of confirmed values. Step 6 is the last and simplest of the steps. Now that you've established your AF tune range, use the midpoint of that range as your final tune value. The midpoint is simply the tune value which has an equal number of confirmed focus values on both sides of the range. In this example, autofocus tune values from minus 13 through plus 5 produce reliable focus confirmation, so the midpoint and final tune value is 4. I've created a midpoint calculator on my website which you can use to perform this calculation quickly. Just enter both ends of the tune range you've established, press the Calculate Midpoint button, and the page will display the final AF tune value you should use. If there are an even number of AF tune values in your range, the midpoint for that range will be a fraction. In that case, just round up or down to the next whole midpoint. In this example, autofocus tune values from plus 2 to plus 11 produce reliable focus confirmation. The midpoint is 6.5 but since cameras don't support fractional autofocus tune values, simply round the value down to 6 or up to 7. Here are some additional dot tune details I need to bring to your attention. If either end of the autofocus tune range still gives you focus confirmation at plus or minus 20, then either your depth of field is too great or your range is too high to be accommodated by the dot tune method. A potential workaround is to slightly defocus the lens to bring the range within the plus or minus 20 tune range to first establish what the width of that range is, then apply that width to the tune range when the lens is focused. I might do a follow-up video to describe this method in more detail. When using back button focusing on Canon bodies, be sure to use the AF on button to trigger the viewfinder focus confirmation. Half pressing the shutter will not engage the confirmation when a Canon body is configured for back button focusing. Some body and lens combinations produce different tune values at different subject distances. This is a property of the AF system or the lens itself and is not specific to the autofocus tuning method used. If you experience this phenomena on your lens, you'll either need to tune for the subject distance you use most often or compromise and choose a distance or tune value that's in between two distances. Note that this also applies for zoom lenses, which produce different tune values at one end of the range of the zoom versus the other. Remember to be patient and methodical when evaluating whether a given tune value is yielding a solid confirmation or one that is marginal. This is especially important at the margins of the tune range, where the differences between a focus confirmation and non-confirmation can be very subtle. If necessary, use multiple 5 second cycles of the shutter half press for extra verification at these tuning margins. Don't compromise on the quality of your autofocus target. If you do, the tune range will be wider than it needs to be, which will increase the time needed to complete the dot tune process or reduce its accuracy or repeatability. Additionally, if you'd like to tune to a precise point within the depth of field, I suggest using a 3D target like a lens alliance target. 
That way you can tune to a specific balance between front and back depth of field to suit your specific shooting preference. I'm now going to walk you through a full dot tune session. This happens to be a D800 with a Sigma 35mm f1.4 lens. So we'll start at a tune value of zero, and you can see immediately we're getting a non-confirmation with a rather fast flickering, which means we're probably pretty far away from the tuning range. Rather than jump like I suggested, I'm going to just go one by one so you can see how the feedback changes as we get closer to the tuning range. So you can see there the dot is already a little more consistent than it was at zero. At minus two, you can see it's more consistent still. It's uh, staying illuminated for longer durations in between the flickers. And minus three is about the same. At minus four, you can definitely see it getting more consistent. And minus five, still more consistent. You can see just a few flickers left, so we're still not at the range. Here at minus six, still a few more flickers. And minus seven, it looks like we're getting a solid dot. Up, oh, there was a single flicker, so uh, still not a confirmed value. And here's minus eight, and here is a solid confirmation. So this is the one end of our tuning range for this camera and lens. So we'll keep on going to establish the full range. Here at minus nine, we're still getting a full confirmed confirmation. And minus 10 is, looks solid as well. And minus 11 is uh, again solid. And here at minus 12, you can see we're getting, we're starting to get a flicker again. So this is where you would stop and use minus 11. But I'll actually keep on going just so you can see how now the confirmation will get progressively worse as we move further away from the range. You can see the flicker and you can also see the rangefinder arrow going in the opposite direction. And then here's minus 14, uh, more flicker still. And I'll only just do one more because again, we're, we're well beyond the range, but I just want to show you how it, the feedback gets progressively worse. So we've established that the range on this camera in 35 millimeter lens is minus eight to minus 11. That means our midpoint is 9.5, which means we either round down to 9 or round up to 10. Well, that about does it. I encourage everyone to give this a shot. If you find any problems, just post into the comments section. I'll try to monitor that as frequently as I can and give you some feedback or guidance on how to get past any problems. Uh, and also, if you find any tips or any uh, changes or errors in the video, please post to the comment section so that everyone can benefit from that. Thanks again and good luck.